All right, um, can you hear me? Well, I'm from St. I wanted to experience what you did. I'm, I'm That's from, why I didn't add anything. Well, I'm from St. Louis, so I love to smother everything. But moving to Texas, I got to where I like dry, the dry. dry or rough. Yeah. I still go back and forth, but you still have like, no, you got to drown it in <laughs> sauce, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. All right, if there's any other little humans running around, can you come up front? Harper. Harper. We'll sing one of your songs, Harper, if you come up here. Do you have a favorite song? You can even lead it if you want, Harper. Papa. How about you, Axton? You coming up? All right. Oh, we got another one. Woo! So how's everybody doing? Good. Got a small crowd. <laughs> everybody have a good week? So what's happened since last time? Christmas Day. Christmas Day. How'd that go? I did my laundry by myself. We're on Christmas. <laughs> How was Christmas for you? Good. Good? Did you, what'd you get? Bluey stuff. Bluey stuff. Nice. I got lots of presents and I got, my stocking was full and the family stocking was full out. And then we got what? Lots of presents. You got lots of presents. Your stocking was full, and the family stocking was full out. Man, what'd you get in your stocking? A notebook, two pens, a a baseball. Oh, baseball cards. You can trade that in for money when you get older. What'd you get? For I like me race track. I push a race track. Race track? Nice. Um, my mom and dad got lots of good things too. My dad got a whole can of popcorn. <clears throat> I got that too. We got a lot of presents. Did you? Um, I got another bluey stuff. An Another bluey thing. Man. I got a mega slime kit or lab with a putty. Mega slime. Stays on the table. I got a Barbie trailer that has 60 um, like pieces to it. I got a twisty pet. What? A twisty pet. A twisty pet? You just twist it around? I was there. I don't remember that. Um, Aston oh, bracelet. Aston Aston got dinosaur um presents. Oh, I see. Ya. Good. I'm glad you guys had a good Christmas. Um, do you want to sing some songs? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if you know these. Where'd it go? All right. 
Let you know. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in the morning, praise Him at the noon time. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him when the sun goes down. Do you guys know that one? Well, that was it. We'll do it again. And then we change the words to like serve him and love him. Okay. What is it? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We'll praise him in the morning. Praise him at the noon time. Praise him. We'll praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. You gotta serve him. We'll serve him. We'll serve him in the morning. Serve him at the noon time and serve. You gotta serve him, serve him when the sun goes down. You gotta love, oh yes, love him. Come love him in morning and love him new time and love him. We'll love him, love him when sun goes down and breeze. You gotta pray. Praise him, praise him in the morning, oh yes, and praise him at the noon time. Praise, you gotta praise him, praise him when the sun goes down. Where is that? I'm singing today, oh yes, I'm singing today in Jesus Christ. I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm singing today, oh, I'm praying today, oh yes, I'm praying today in Jesus Christ. I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why. I'm praying today, you know I'm loving today, oh yes, loving today in Jesus Christ, I'm loving today because he's taken all my sins away, and that's why I'm today you know i'm singing today oh yes i'm praying today in jesus christ i'm loving today because he's taking all my sins away and that's why i'm singing today did you guys know that last one you guys did a good job very good all right so what's my question how have you been the hands and feet well, I know you haven't been to school, but how have you been the hands and feet of Jesus this week? I did the dishes this whole week. The whole week? My mom helped, helped me did dishes. You helped do the dishes too? Okay. I helped mom take care of Brody because he's crawling now. Who? Brody. Brody. Mm, yeah. Especially around the steps, you got to watch that, don't you? And the stairs. Oh, yeah, and the stairs. Um, I did the gr the dishes for Grandma. I see ya. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Anybody else? How are you the hands and feet of Jesus? We cleaned the toy room before everyone came over to open presents. Nice. Um, my mom helped help me pick the presents up. Oh, you helped the presents after they were unwrapped. I got my kids. I got my kids. Awesome. Um, me and Zayden um helped clean up the kitchen and um the the house while you're gone. Very. I helped Blake and Harper in Brooklyn clean the tree house. Tree house? It has lots of messy. Yeah, yeah, pine needles all over it. Oh. Very good. You guys are impressive. Did you have something else? Um, 
my mom help me um did the dishes again. Oh, and then you did them again? Nice. Very good. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Or prayers they want to put down that they're so happy about that God blessed them with? Um, to help Grandma and Grandma have a safe trip to Arizona on January 4th. Yep, that's a good one. Or maybe like their car breaks down, they have to stay here the rest of the winter. Oh, they wouldn't like that? Okay. So a safe trip then. Um, Mima and Papa helped me clean up. Okay. Um, help Grandma with her a cancer. Follow with her cancer? That's a good one. Do you have a prayer request? What you got? I open all my presents and save some for get to open. My mommy has some presents for get the. Nice. Very good. Pray for my teacher. Pray and her teacher's name. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. Still out. Do you have a prayer request? Or. Um, my teacher helped me pick up books. Yes. Very nice. You did excellent. Great job. I am so sad. I'm not going to see you till next year. <sighs> it's a dad joke. You know why? Because we only got a couple more days and it's next year. Yeah. So it's not that long. All right. I think Mr. Jeff's got announcements for us. Good evening, everyone. So good to see everyone here this evening. We are so thankful that you uh, came out and joined us tonight. That's wonderful. And to all those online, we welcome you as well. Uh, for announcements real quick, of course, we have some families that are in quarantine. Uh, the Ford family is in quarantine. Uh, Craig is having mild symptoms and uh, the family is, he did get tested already, but no results. And I think the rest of the family is getting ready to get scheduled for testing. The Cullingworth family, uh, Rod did get tested and he did uh, turn up positive. And so he's in quarantine and, and the rest of his family is figuring out how to get tested as well. So we need to pray for those families. We also have one more opportunity, well, a couple more opportunities uh, left for corrections and updates to the 2021 pitcher directory. So the last opportunity you have is Saturday. So come Saturday evening, it'll be too late, okay? So uh, if you haven't done that yet, you can check that on the website, go on the website real quick. If you have any issues, I'm sure you could uh, text uh, Gina or Cindy and uh, they'd be able to help you out with that. But please look at that and, and double check all the information, make sure they got your birthday correct, okay? Uh, and all that kind of stuff, the anniversaries and all the stuff, information is listed there, okay? So other prayer requests that we have going on, just to refresh your memory and bring you up to date real quick, we continue to have Wilford uh, Golding, who is still recovering from clots that have affected his short-term term memory, so be with him. Uh, the Bird family is having a very tough week. Uh, Guthrie Bird has lost an aunt and an uncle just last week and expected to lose a grandmother and another uncle in the next day or two. So they are, uh, they are hurting very deeply, and so we need to pray for them as they, they have to undergo so many losses at the same, in the, such a short time frame. Justin Eldridge is recovering from COVID. Uh, he did test positive and he's recovering, so that's good news. Uh, our sister Joyce Fars uh, is recovering from a fall, which has resulted in a blood clot. So she's having a little bit of a struggle. Uh, she's in Indiana, I believe, still, correct? And so uh, we're praying for her that uh, she'll get over that very quickly. And also uh, Alma Murphy is still recovering, and she's kind of uh, 
uh, refined to the bed, so she can't, she can't get out of bed. So she's, she's struggling as well, so we need to pray for her. Do we have any other prayer requests this evening that the congregation needs to be aware of? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we just come before you. Uh, we just humble ourselves before your throne this evening. And Father, we are so blessed. And I know at times our frustrations and our struggles, we feel like we are so overwhelmed and struggling with so many things. This year has been a difficult year for many of us. We have to deal with so many things that are going on in the media, in the political realm, and in the world, and the workplace changes. Our children have to deal with things that we never dreamed would come up. And Father, we thank you for your patience and your love on such a sinful people as us. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your strength and for your wisdom, for your love. Will you continue to fill us with the attributes that we need to have and to be the examples that we need to be to the world? The world needs to see you, and we need to show them to you. And Father, we just pray that we can be effective that can, we can be aware of those around us each and every day, an opportunity that we have that do not have the hope and the promise that we have as your children. And Father, we thank you for all the many prayers that you have answered on our behalf. And we continue to lift up those on our prayer list. Father, you know who they are. And we pray for healing, and uh, we pray for peace and comfort for the families. And we pray, Father, that your will be done. Father, we want to thank you for each other, for the encouragement that we have been to each other and for the smiles and, and uh, the cards and the calls and the, the prayers lifted up on our behalf. They have made us better people. They have brightened our day. They have put a spring in our step. And we are thankful for the love that we have for one another. And Father, we thank you for each person here and for those online as we gather together at this time in the middle of the week that we set aside to open our Bibles and learn more about you and your son. Father, there is so much to learn and just every time we think we have it all covered, we learn new things and you show us new beauties and and new amazing things in your word, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for our children that sing to you and love you and, and continue to try to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We thank you for this evening and this opportunity, and we pray that you'll be with each and every one of us. Help us stay focused on you the remainder of this day. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. next lesson. <laughs>
I'm the online community tonight too. Um, just quickly, there is a, one announcement I wanted to uh, share with you guys um, to add to the others. The uh, visitor member of follow-up ministry that we've spoken of a couple of times, uh, at least that, that um, Jeff mentioned in the congregational meeting a short while ago, we want to launch soon. We'll have a meeting for that in two weeks' time. Um, be a blessing Wednesday. That's January 13th. Um, the folks who had volunteered before or expressed an interest to be part of that ministry have been contacted already. Um, but it was suggested that maybe we throw it open again and ask anybody else who, who has not had the opportunity to uh, get involved or to respond. You can do that. You can get a hold of me. If you'd like to know more about our, our visitor or our guest and uh, member follow-up ministry to, to make sure people are connected, you can get a hold of me. All right. Well, we'll be looking at um, lesson four tonight. That's the video we were just broadcasting and that we looked at, and we'll, we'll discuss some of that. So the initial short video um, referring to the purification of gold that mentioned some of the details, like the 2,000 degree temperature, for instance, all of that connected to our spiritual lives reminds us that um, God applies this principle of, of burning the dross out of us to our spiritual lives. And it's unpleasant, it's uncomfortable, but but totally necessary. It's part of, it's um, integral to becoming holy, being sanctified. Uh, John Bevere reminds us that it is one of the major points of the wilderness that we had looked at a few weeks ago. So uh, it's not a popular aspect, and we'll just touch on that briefly again. He mentioned 2 Corinthians 7, uh, verse 1, talking about cleansing ourselves. Yes, Jesus' blood cleanses us, but we're part of the process is, is an important aspect here. We have to uh, cleanse ourselves. We have to put in the effort, and that is part of this process of heading to holiness. Now. In uh, this, the broader context of Second Corinthians, the end of chapter six and leading into chapter seven, it's it's the context of of being separated from the filthy things of the world of of unbelievers, uh, as six chapter six verse seventeen indicates, for instance, and it draws a very clear distinction there in that text between light and dark, between good and evil, between God's community and those who are not a part of God's community, and, and therefore what it takes to become a part of God's community, part of God's family. So it's, it's very closely connected to relationship again. God connects holiness to relationship with him, and, and conversely, uh, relationship with him is supposed to lead to greater holiness. On the other hand, uh, impure living or ungodly living separates us from God and has us commune more with the world which is what we're supposed to separate from uh, in terms of influence uh, when, we, when we walk with God. Of course, we know we're supposed to make an impact in this world. We're supposed to be light in the world. We're supposed to be salt in the world. So that's, as Paul has said elsewhere also, we're not supposed to separate ourselves totally out of the world. But it's that influence. It's that identity. It's, it's the lifestyle that's called into, into contrast here. Um, Isaiah 48, as we had just said, very clearly we are refined by affliction or in the process of affliction. That's what God intentionally does. And again, that's what this whole wilderness study is, is about, is God intentionally leads us into the wilderness as part of a purification process. Just briefly, we had mentioned before that it's intentional. Um, it's not punishment. It's not being set aside necessarily, although uh, we can um, you know, find ourselves punished for purification, which could be a wilderness experience. And they, those are both true. We had made the point, for instance, that Israel was supposed to stroll, well, hike, trek, for yeah, whatever it was, about two weeks from Egypt into the promised land. But because of rebellion, because of disobedience, they found themselves in that wilderness experience. So very clearly we would say that was punishment. Um, and yet that was a purification. And, and then as we look at other examples, Moses, for instance, and Jesus and others, 
um, David for his years in the, in the desert. These are intentional things that God does, and that's the aspect of the wilderness we're focusing on, is God's intentional leading us through the wilderness to, to mature, to, to teach, to purify. Um, and, you know, we have said, of course, uh, I mean, we have said that we can prolong the wilderness experience by how we behave, the, the purification process. Um, so then just this, this back to Isaiah 48, 10, it's, it's an intentional refining process that, that God has underway. And, and we might just say, because it's prevalent all over, we might just say, we just have, this is one of those suck it up things, uh, just accept it. That's the way it is. Now we want to have a good attitude about it, of course, and, uh, and not just, you know, accept it and, and mumble along and grumble along because we could test God in the process again and prolong our experience. So we want to have a faith response then to what God's doing and, and an obedience respond and, and look to what God's trying to do and let him um, uh, bring the garbage out. And, and so that's what John Bevere then later talks about or, or, or explores a little further. Um, he, he says he started out when he thought God was going to purify him and, and you know, make him holy and, and everybody around him, part of that ministry, uh, in the wrong direction. And then after a few months of that, God said, okay, let's do it my way now. So um, he then talks a little bit about how he, he yeah, he made some mistakes, but he, he didn't really, he didn't think he did anything wrong. It was just that he didn't have, you know, the particular gifts for the area he was in, but what God was doing was training him for something else and preparing him for something else. So he, he went through a difficult time what for, that for him was a wilderness, um, separated or, or demoted in a sense is what that felt like for him. And so I'm assuming that all of us in some way or another can identify with, some sort of wilderness experience or multiple ones. I know I've certainly uh, felt like I've been through multiple ones and, and no doubt God will have to put me through more. Uh, maybe I'm a slow study. I'm, I, I learn slowly. Uh, but I know it's a gracious work of God, a, a, a blessed, gracious thing that God is doing. Um, and so he says there that he was wondering where all this stuff came from. And, and if you'd like to uh, make a comment there, um, you know, you can, you know, respond to this, this aspect. Um, in, if, if it resonates with you, if you've experienced um, what he discovered in that uh, and, and, and connected to that gold refining process is that that stuff is in there. What happens when the fire gets lit, when that stuff is in the purification process, the things that are in there, maybe not visible, become visible. It is being made visible. It rises to the surface so that it can be taken off. It can be recognized and taken off. And so um, I'm not sure if, if anybody listening um, is, you know, identifies with that and, and um, has something maybe in their own lives. And, you know, it might be too hard to share some of that in, in the short time we have, but um, we, um, it's, it's a similar concept to the light of the word of God being shone in the darkness. The light, yeah, is like a path to lead us, but what it does also is, is it reveals what's in the darkness. And uh, in, in a sense, then also in our hearts and our minds, the, the light of the word of God shines in us and shows us what's there. And then we have a decision to make. And that is, are we going to allow God to purify or are we going to resist? And so that's where, where, where John Bevere said, yeah, he definitely had this God. Please help me with this. Take this away. I don't want to scoop it off. I want to do that. And that obviously, as, as Christians, we would say is the best response is that we would say, okay, this is bad. Uh, my selfishness and my anger, my deception, my, you know, whatever it might be, this stuff has to go. And it's revealed in these testing circumstances, in this crucible that I'm in, uh, whatever those circumstances might be. So yeah, okay, God, thank you for revealing it. Take it away. Rather than becoming defensive and saying, okay, well, that's not my fault. It was my upbringing, uh, or that's just who I am, or it's 
there's too much hard work, you know, whatever excuses we might have. We want to steer clear of those and be be humble and and, and let let God do what He's going to do. Um, so I was I was wondering, um, you know, what we what we might how we might respond to this statement also that um, uh, John says he had insight on or, or, or considered that you cannot cast out flesh, you crucify it. Does that resonate with scripture? Does that sound right? Flesh cannot be cast out. Um, and as, you know, talking, I guess, from, from a faith perspective, like casting out a demon kind of thing, um, getting rid of, of of something by just taking it out today, he's saying that doesn't work for, for this dross that comes up. The flesh, this life has to be put to death, right? Um, you know, it might take some time for for comments to come up, but um, I'm thinking of uh, of Romans eight, for instance, um, and uh, Colossians three. I, you know, I looked those scriptures up. Unfortunately, I, I cannot claim to have such great Bible knowledge that those were foremost in my mind. Maybe next week they will be. But Romans eight and Colossians three specifically refer to that putting to death the things of the flesh. Um, we have to subject is another expression used, the things of the flesh. We have to lift up and nurture the things of the spirit. Um, and so, you know, what does that practically mean? <clears throat> it sounds a little bit like Matthew 5, for instance, 29 and following. If your eye causes you to sin, you know, what should we do? If your hand causes you to sin, what should we do? There's this process involved, and, and that is, is where, where John's focusing this this lesson here tonight that we were saying, yes, the blood of Christ does cleanse us, but we cleanse ourselves. There is this process we're involved. We, we participate with God in this, and we, we don't resist him. We allow him to reveal. We accept what he reveals, as embarrassing as it can be, and, and because of faith, because we know that God's ways are better, as we you know, want to continue to embark on this journey of maturing and being more useful to God, being more effective instruments in his hands, we, we participate with him to get rid of these things. And it, it takes actual steps on our part to, to stay away from certain things, places, maybe even people. Um, you know, if, if they've, you know, we think for instance of the, of the, um, 12 step community, the, the folks will often say to reach sobriety, you know, they had to stay away from some people who weren't on the same journey. Um, you know, we, as Christians have a similar th process in our lives. There's some TV shows, there's some, you know, things to read, maybe certain music, um, we don't allow ourselves to to think certain thoughts. When um, we read, for instance, of of taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ in this war that we're in, we understand that to, to mean, at least in part, that um, our intentional response to thoughts that come from who knows where. Sometimes they come from our own flesh. Sometimes uh, we would say the evil one puts them there. You know, as we read in, in uh, John 13, for instance, where it says that the evil one had put it in, in Judas's heart to betray Jesus. There's that process that, that goes on. It could be the evil one. It could be we ourselves. It's something we read, something we hear, whatever. When that comes, that initial response or that initial thing that comes is not necessarily the sin yet. Because sometimes we have thoughts that, that we think, well, where did that come from? I don't even know why I'm thinking that or where that comes from. What we do with it then determines whether, whether we act on the sin or not. That's part of this purification process. We take it captive in obedience to Christ, to the obedience of Christ, and we, we send it away, put it in prison, as it were, burn it, lock it up. And then, of course, the things that come from God, the opposite of this might be good. We read something in scripture that inspires us or uh, Christians tell us something, you know, about godly living. Um, whatever the, the origin is, if it, if it is good, then again, we have a decision to make. 
are we going to allow this to convict us? Are we going to allow this to encourage us? Are we going to take this and act on it? Or are we going to find an excuse not to do the good things that God wants us to do? Because it definitely takes discipline. It takes uh, practice to, to learn, for instance, to discern right from wrong, to learn to be more patient. It, it's, as, as we've said so often before, these things are like exercise. They don't just happen. We pursue them. And so that's part of the process. Yes, God cleanses us. His blood cleanses us. But we're part of a process that we're involved with to set aside the dross, the bad stuff, and to embrace the purification process and take on the good things of God. Um, if we don't learn, we will just stay there, right? And the wilderness experience will be prolonged and prolonged and prolonged. Uh, that's, you know, within, within our power to deal with. Proverbs 25, he, he referred to, um, I'm not seeing any uh, other comments come up uh, here in response to anything yet, so I'll, I'll just carry on. But again, if, if you'd like to uh, respond in some way, please feel free to do so. Um, yeah, Proverbs 25, uh, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and kings search out a matter. Um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, does that sound right? That God does not take pleasure in revealing our weaknesses? Is that not maybe contradictory to what we've just discussed, that he reveals to us what's going on? It seems like the distinction here has to do with the public versus the private. God is more than willing because, and we'll, we'll look at, you know, the good reasons uh, for us to point out what is wrong, what needs to go, what is garbage, what is impure, what needs to be burnt off. Um, but it seems like the distinction here is that he's not willing to make a spectacle of us. He's not willing to make us look bad necessarily. We can do that well enough by ourselves. You know, when we act up, when we do something wrong, when we disobey or rebel, we can bring attention on ourselves, but God's not in the business of, of embarrassing us in front of other people. So he, he wants to, to reveal to us what's going on. And, and then we're part of this, this process of then of, of, um, of, of searching out what is there and removing that. Um, I think for instance, of, um, first Corinthians 13, the the emphasis on on, on 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 what love embodies in action, you know, not not so much in definition, um, but in 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 illustration. This is what love looks like. For instance, keeps no record of wrongs and you know, does not delight in unrighteousness. It, you know, takes no joy in somebody's calamity. For instance. You know, God is, is gracious in how he deals with us. And so there's an interesting um, reference there to the difference between Saul and David. Saul did not have a wilderness experience. I hadn't considered that before. David certainly did. And um, David was molded by that. He had a heart that was responsive to God. Excuse me, I just need to drink some water. Um, and so, yeah, we can, we, we cannot guess for God why Saul did not have that. Um, but when God does bring it, as we were saying earlier on, and as we've said in previous classes, um, it's a gracious thing that God's doing in this wilderness journey. When he, when he just, br when he brings us up this, this stuff that we, we just have to deal with. Suck it up. It's part of the process. And just accept it. Um, we can thank God for the wilderness, as John Bevere says. It's the grace of God. And, and it was interesting. He said it's for our protection. Now, that sounds totally correct. All of these things that God does are for our good, for our protection, for our guidance, for our help, for our learning, to help us deal with what's coming down the pike, to help us... Um, shine the light more clearly to help us be greater seasoning in people's lives. It's all part of what God's trying to do to, to mature us. Um, and so, yeah, um, I feel like I've had more of these experiences than I wanted. 
And no doubt God will bring more in his grace, but also because I've still got so much to learn. I uh, hope I can just learn faster. Um, and then we, we just um, don't want to forget this, this aspect of First Peter uh, 1, verses 6 and 7. We're in a little while, God will you know, do what he will do. In a little while, we will be released, uh, released from our, uh, our trial. Yeah, God doesn't measure time the way we do in, in, at the right time. And for the correct duration, he will do what he needs to do. So we can prove that our faith is genuine, that our response to God is genuine, that, that it's pure. And it gets purified in, in the process. And so then the last few things that John said that are uh, useful to us is that there are benefits of the refining process. And he, he mentioned specifically gold. Gold becomes softer. It becomes uh, incorruptible. Well, you know, we read in Scripture that everything is corruptible in this world, but relatively speaking, compared to other precious metals or other metals, it becomes incorruptible, it becomes transparent, um, that reference to uh, the streets of gold in heaven, and uh, we become vessels of honor. So these are specifically the, the benefits of the refining process that he tackles, you know, that we, that we can speak of as we remember that it's a difficult process, and it's, it's uncomfortable. And even though we just have to bear it and... Um, don't necessarily want to, if we can remember these things, no doubt it would make it easier. We become more pliable before God so that he can teach us. We become less stained by the world, reminds us also of the seed, right? The various kinds of seed. One of those types of seed was choked by the, the worries of the world. The, 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 the things of the world just overcome some seed. We don't want that to happen. We want to be purified so that we are incorruptible. And, um, so that we become um, you know, less visible. As we become less visible and transparent, God in us is visible. I know some people like that, and it's, 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 it's actually quite an astounding thing to see how people are drawn to godly people. It's God in them. Um, it's it's uh, quite something to see. And then we become vessels of honor, uh, made clean by the Master. So uh, thank you again for your attention. I see it's uh, 8 o'clock. Um, we didn't have any more comments. I guess that's done now, uh, the time for that. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed week and allow God to do his purification. And may we not have an unnecessarily long wilderness experience. God bless you guys. Good night.